With video game marketing at its highest point in decades, like spending $500 million on Activision's Destiny campaign, it's no surprise that a game doesn't live up to its hype. I mean, hell, look at Watch Dogs. Hey Shackers, Greg here, and today I'm going to go over some of the most disappointing video games ever hyped. Now, these aren't the most disappointing games of all time, just a top 10 list of disappointing games I personally thought were a letdown. Stop the music! Stop it. Just just stop for a second. If a game is on this list, it doesn't mean it was a bad game. Although some of these games on this list are, not all are bad. With that said, let's dive into this gigantic pool that is sadness and unrealized expectations. These are the top 10 disappointing games to hit our screens. What are you talking about? I never get what I want. I am very disappointed! We need to stand together. The Reapers won't stop at Earth. They'll destroy Wait, how good Mass Effect 2 was? It was going to, to be hard to beat. And to my surprise, it didn't come close. Although an enjoyable game, the story and scenarios didn't come close to Mass Effect 2. But it was the abysmal ending that really disappointed us. No wonder a lot of fans cried outrage. Hell, I was one of them. It's the fact that the final ending was so underwhelming and unsatisfying. Nothing I did mattered, which gives Mass Effect 3 an overall disappointing feeling. I should go. I am... a little... disappointed. I'd like to reiterate that not all games on this list that make this list are bad games. Evolve is not a bad game. However, I do feel it was very hit and miss for some people, and I was one of those people who felt it missed. The game has a very free-to-play feel, with essentially one main game mode and two other variations of that game mode, and no story campaign to speak of. The game was designed heavily with esports in mind. I personally think that the key to any good esports game should be 1. Easy access, free. 2. Easy to pick up. 3. Difficult to master. Evolve has a huge learning curve. If just one hunter isn't doing their job right, you lose. And that's the issue. You're either winning epically or losing terribly. And the amount of DLC, in my opinion, is ridiculous. Two bucks for a color gun swap? The game's not bad, but at full retail and being a AAA title, it's kind of disappointing. It can be fun, which is why it's so low on this list. I am very disappointed! Coming from a AAA studio, however it was passed down to two different studios at one point, and was even considered being cancelled, but fan outcry begged the publisher to not cancel it. Please, please don't cancel Aliens Colonial Marines. Please, Gearbox, 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 listen to me. Just calm down. After a long wait, what we got was a cookie cutter first person shooter with huge story gaps, contradicting the Aliens movie franchise timeline, mediocre graphics that looked much cleaner, detailed, and overall better at shows like E3, and boring gameplay that had stupid human and alien AI making the whole game a mundane experience. Let this be a note, if a studio is thinking about canceling the game, they probably have a good reason. You fucked it up! I am... a little... disappointed. Well, I reckon you didn't do it then. Why do you say that? Tales of Monkey Island and Back to the Future were two of my favorite recent Telltale games, and after the awful under the radar Jurassic Park game and the fun yet underrated Puzzle Agent, I had been looking forward to a point and click zombie adventure. What I got was... a interactive movie? No puzzles, no mysteries, just press A, B, or C, watch cutscene. Hello? 
Now, did the game tell an interesting story? Absolutely, no doubt. But if I wanted to watch a movie, I'd watch a movie. Until Telltale can bring back the point-and-click games that make me actually think, I'll skip their future installments. You just, just look at the flowers, Lizzie. <laughs> just look at the flowers. I am a little disappointed. Mm -hmm. Why is it so hard for this blue-haired rodent to make a decent game? This was not the redemption story, that is Sonic's comeback. Everything about this game was wrong, just wrong. The gameplay sucked, the story was ridiculous, controlling Sonic was tedious, but luckily we eventually got the Sonic game we deserved. Disappointed! Wow, killer. Those were the two words uttered the most during this game's five year, $50 million development cycle. After what seemed like a lifetime of marketing, beautiful CGI trailers, and previews, the game finally hit the PC and PlayStation 3. And not even DC legend himself, Jim Lee, could save it. The game wasn't sure what it was an MMO? An action game? It wasn't responsive and dynamic enough to be an action game, and the lack of end-game content at launch was low compared to other MMOs at that time. The game went from a monthly subscription to free-to-play fairly quickly, and it wasn't the WoW killer everyone had hoped for. Although the game is better now, I still felt that the combat system, raids, and overall design was clunky. I am... a little... disappointed. It's time to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and I'm all out of gum. It had been 14 years since we last saw the Duke kick ass and chew bubble gum, but this game failed at every turn and met fans everywhere with disappointment. The game visually looked bad, and the gameplay seemed subpar, and it made me want to play the PC original that was more than 10 years old, which is sad. And the entire game just seemed to try too hard to be cool. It's one game meant for the bargain bin. I am very disappointed! This is for the online mode itself. It was just painful. The extremely long loading times, the constant getting kicked in and out of gaming sessions with friends, made this online mode almost impossible to enjoy. Combine that with the delays upon delays for the online heist mode has made this a very disappointing experience. I am a little disappointed. Boy, where do I start with this one? Aside for a few, and I mean few, interesting characters, this game was one of the biggest disappointments of my gaming life. From the lame and mundane side quest, to the horrible main questline that had you in the same boring location for the entirety of the game, world exploring, gone, character gear customization, gone, the feeling of overcoming adversity, gone. I hated everything about this game. Sure, the combat system was improved and moved at a faster pace, but everything else had failed to deliver. If you've never played Dragon Age 2, I envy you. I am. Very disappointed! Stop! Just stop! Stop! Stop the music! Stop! Before everyone starts yelling and hitting that dislike button, just, just wait one second. For you to understand why, I need to take you back, back to a time where E3 was open to the public, a time where the GameCube was the most powerful console on the market. Let's go back to the year 2000. 
You're in Japan at a public game show called Space World 2000, and you see this. Fresh off the GameCube bandwagon, this footage showcased the power of the cube, and Nintendo had its lips sealed with the next-gen Zelda title for the little square console. The crowd erupts in excitement for the trailer, and Nintendo promises more to come at E3. Two years later, we are ready for the most epic, darkest, best-looking Zelda... What the f*** is this? Fans of Nintendo were met with this. A cute animated low-texture Toon Link. With mixed reactions and to much confusion, it was a Zelda no one was expecting or wanted. What the hell happened? It wasn't until 2004 at E3 did we finally get the Zelda game we had all been waiting for, which was Twilight Princess. The unexpected Wind Waker announcement let everyone down. Look at these two trailer reactions. But before you leave, I'd like you to step inside one more world for Nintendo GameCube. The Wind Waker was a game I just couldn't get into, due to the fact that it just wasn't the game I was expecting. And even though it may be unfair to judge a game based on that fact, it hit me in the head so fast and unexpectedly, I was just truly disappointed with the final product. I wanted Twilight Princess, not Wind Waker. And even though it's extremely popular now, as well as that Toon Link going on to be one of the most famous Link designs in the history of video games, I will always remember the disappointment I felt when it was announced and when I played it on my little purple GameCube. What games let you guys down the hardest? Let us know in the comments below. And for more lists and gaming news, you're already in the right place. You're on shacknews.com. I am a little disappointed. And if there is one thing I do not like, it is to be disappointed. Sorry, sir. This will never happen again. I know. Lift off.